In previous videos, we have looked at uh, relative cell references, which is the default in Excel. We've looked at absolute cell references, which is where you put a dollar sign in front of the letter and a dollar sign in front of the number. And it turns out there's one more type of cell reference in Excel, and that is a mixed cell reference. And that's just what it sounds like. Part of the uh, cell reference is absolute, which means it has a dollar sign, and part of it is not, which means there is no dollar sign. So uh, it makes a whole lot more sense if we have an example here. So let's do a simple example. I'm just going to put a plus sign in there, and then a 1 and a 2, and select both the 1 and the 2, get your fill handle, and drag it all the way down to row 11. I want the numbers 1 through 10, and then I want the numbers 1 through 10 across the top here. So put a 1 and a 2 in. Uh, remember, you got to select both of them. Selecting just the 2 doesn't work, and we want numbers 1 through 10 across the top. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make an addition table where any number here in the middle of the table is the sum of the number over here in column A and it is the sum of the number up here in row 1. Okay. Now before we go any further, let's make uh, this stuff look a little bit nicer first. Uh, let's select all of this stuff and then hold the control key down and select all of this stuff over here too. And these are going to be my column headings and my row headings. And the first thing I want to do is center them horizontally. So click on the center option here. And I think what I'll also do is I will um, apply some heading formatting. We'll do heading 4 for them as well. So it makes them bold and it makes them blue. So they kind of look a little bit different than the numbers we're going to have down here. And I also want to put uh, a thick outside border around that stuff. So it's separated a little bit from um, the data down here. Okay, so now uh, I said any number in here is going to be the sum of a number over here and a number up here. So a number over here is always in column A, a number up here is always row 1. So the A never changes on the first term and the 1 never changes on the second term. So let's go here and let's see what our formula would be it'd be equals uh, A2 plus B1. Okay. Now that's a relative cell reference. They're both relative cell references and that's not going to work if I copy it because um, the 2 will get changed into a 3, the 1 will get changed into a 2, and every as you move down the page they're going to change. So I know that the first term is always coming from column A so I need to put a dollar sign in front of the A and I missed the dollar sign. Let's try that again. And also, I know that the B1, the 1 is never going to change. So I need to put a dollar sign in front of the 1. And I missed again. Let's try that. Okay, so my formula should be dollar sign A2. The 2 will change. If I go down a row, it'll change to a 3 and a 4 and a 5 and so on. And then B dollar sign 1. The row 1 will never change, but if I slide across, the B will change into a C or a D or a D or an F and so on. Okay, hit enter. And it tells me that 1 plus 1 is 2. And now if I copy that formula down, and you can't cut or you can't copy in both directions at the same time. So uh, let me undo that for a second. Uh, if I try to go down, I can do that. If I try to go across, whoops, I accidentally let go of the mouse. So if I try to go down like that and I try to go across, you see what happens to the green selection here. It does one or the other, but it doesn't do both. You can't copy in two directions at once. So you got to divide into two steps. So copy it down, let go of the mouse, uh, go back and leave all of these selected. We're going to copy them all across. Get your fill handle and drag it all the way across. Okay. And now let's center these while we're at it. And let's put a outside border around these while we're at it. And so it looks pretty good. Uh, I think I'd have a line here under the A1, so I'm going to do an outside border on that. Now when I click off, okay. And you know one other thing I'm going to do? Uh, column and row headings should look different. I've got them so that they're bold and they're dark blue. Um, but let's also do just a little bit of shading for them as well. So there we go. I'll pick a light blue shade. And now it's very obvious that these are headings and not part of the data. Now, if you double click on any cell, the first term is colored blue and the blue box is over here in column A. The second term is colored red and the red box is up here in row 1. And it doesn't matter where I go. I'm going to double click on another one. Get to escape first, by the way. I'm going to double click on another one. The first item is coming from A1 and the second one is coming from 
think I said A1. I meant A9. The 8 does not change. There's a dollar sign. And uh, I1, the 1 does not change. And you can pick any place you want to in here. And you're always getting the first blue cell from column A. And you're always getting the second red cell from row 1. So anytime you have a table where numbers across the top and numbers down the side determine the numbers at the intersection of that row and column, in other words, everything in the table depends on the number up here and the number over here, then you're always going to use mixed cell references. Always. Okay, so that's an example of using mixed cell references, and we'll take a look at another example that uses mixed cell references and absolute cell references in our next video.